Dr. Fizz on engines. These problems are neat, they're applied, and they're all kind of done the same way. You consider a path in the PV plane, which is a cycle that will repeat. Here we start at A, go to B, C, and D. You can think of this as compressing a gas, then firing it up to burn the fuel, pressure increases dramatically, and then the gas expands doing some work. The engine does work, and then here we have a drop in pressure, and we're ready to start the process again. This is kind of an ideal case, which we will study to understand all the fine aspects of the analysis. Well, it's labeled for us here. We have to be giving certain things like the stroke you know, ratio, you're going to compress from 2 V naught to V naught, and this is P naught, and this is 2 P naught. We use the ideal gas formula to note the temperatures at the various points. This would be nice to do. In other words, T naught is down here. And since the volume is constant and the pressure doubled, then if the pressure should double, the temperature has to double. So you might write a 2 T naught up at point C. And then if you go to point D, you have 2 P naught and 2 V naught. So in the ideal gas formula, PV is NRT. If you plug in 2 V naught for the V and 2 P naught for the P, you would get 4 T naught for the T. So you may write a 4 T naught so that you know what the temperature is at D. Down at this point you have P naught and 2 V naught so when you plug that into the ideal gas formula you will solve and find your temperature is simply 2 T naught. Your uh, constant temperature lines are actually uh, curves in the curves in the PV diagram analysis you have P is NRT over V so if T is constant you have a 1 over V f form so imagine a 1 over V here picking up point B which would be the T naught isotherm here you have the 2 T naught isotherm that picks up A and C and here another 1 over V graph would pick up the D point which is the 4 T naught isotherm. It's just nice to have the uh, temperatures at the four points. Then we want to calculate for the various trip uh, segments around the loop. We want to calculate the change in energy, internal energy, the change in the heat transfer, and the work done. Here you do these in any order you see fit. And these are key equations you want to remember. PV is NRT, which we already have used. And the change in energy, internal energy, is equal to 3 halves NR delta T. And the first law of thermodynamics, the change in energy, is equal to the heat flowing in minus the work done by expansion. And the definition for the efficiency of the engine, the net work done, which is the green the center shaded region here, because when we compress we'll do negative work and we do this positive work and the area in the negative work is down here which will uh, subtract from the positive work which is the total area and you get that nice area inside and if you divide that by the heat you put into the system which is basically your fuel analysis then that ratio gets you your efficiency. Now let's work this out in detail to master all the concepts. The work is the easiest one to calculate since you have two constant pressures here so it's PDV. Notice that when I go from A to B I decrease the volume so the final volume is V naught minus the initial volume 2 V naught is a negative V naught and when I multiply by the P naught I get here negative P naught V naught. However it's nice to express all these as the problem suggests and indicates that it should be in terms of N, R, and T naught. So since this is negative P 
he naught v naught just put in the little box negative n r t naught since we're asked to do that when we fill out this chart uh, this next one here from b to c this is an isometric process and there is no change in volume so you put a zero here when you go from c to d the change in volume is the final is 2 v naught minus the initial v naught is a v naught so from c to d you have 2 p naught times v naught which is the entire area under here and that's going to be positive but notice that when we do the subtraction for this part we add up all these works we're going to get this neat little shaded region but anyway for the c to d you want 2 p naught times v naught and 2 p naught times v naught is n r 2 t naught so you put here 2 n r t naught and for d to a you put 0 when you add up all the works to get the network you will add up here your 2 n r t naught plus a negative n r t naught and the network done which is the shaded region here is equal to n r t naught so we have the numerator in our efficiency calculation the next thing to do is to focus on the energy because delta t it gives you the delta u when you multiply by three halves n r so that's going to be easy i know my temperatures at all my points and i will proceed by starting with the first one here to go from a to b the temperature you wrote down here is 2 t naught and the temperature here is t naught so the drop in temperature here is a negative t naught so when you put in negative t naught for the delta t you get negative 3 halves n r t naught and that goes in this box here negative 3 halves n r t naught you might at this point go to the b to c in order and if you go from b to c in order you're going from t naught to 2 t naught so that change is a plus t naught and what goes here is then 3 halves n r t naught when you go from c to d you might recall here you have a 4 t naught written down and you're initial temperature is 2 t naught when you subtract those you get 2 t naught so 2 t naught goes in for delta t it cancels that too and what goes here is 3 n r t naught when you go for the last leg of the journey you go from 4 t naught to 2 t naught so your change in temperature is a negative 2 t naught twos cancel and this is a negative 3 n r t naught now a good check is to add all these up and since we come back to the same point which has the same temperature you should get zero and sure enough if you add these up you will get zero the hardest column here now becomes easy because we use the second law of therm excuse me the first law of thermodynamics and the first law of thermodynamics states that delta u is delta q minus delta w where you have your delta u's and delta q and you have your delta w so delta q will be simply obtained by adding this column result to this column result so when you add here your minus three has n r t naught with your negative n r t naught you will get here a negative five halves n r t naught here when you add for your delta q when you add your delta u and delta w since that's a zero you just put here the same value you have over on the left since delta w is zero and that's the same thing that you'll be doing down here for this one here we add delta u and delta w to get delta q and here you had two n r t naught and here you have 
three NRT naught, so that's a five NRT naught. It might be fun to add all these up, and you will find that you get NRT naught, which agrees with this NRT naught because this is neat. If this is zero, if delta U is zero for the total, then delta Q must equal delta W, and you have that result NRT naught, NRT naught. But for calculating the efficiency, we must use the heat that we put into the system. In other words, the fuel. So we look here for the delta Q's that are positive. You'll find there's two of them, the one that has a three halves and the one with a five, multiplying your NRT naught. Well, five is equal to 10 halves, and this is three halves, so you get 13 halves. So 13 halves for here, and there's just one NRT naught here, so the 13 halves will flip and you'll get your efficiency as 2 thirteenths, which is what the problem asks you to show. All of these are done the same way. You'll be given another question or two for homework, and you simply use this kind of approach to work out the problem and ultimately calculate the efficiency of your engine.